Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Monday, December 11th, 2023. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life and today I have knitting and crocheting to share with you all. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I am hosting a year-long make-along on Instagram this year called the Make 9 2023 Mal, and that's for you to join in the Make 9 Challenge. We are wrapping it up as we head near the end of the year, but I wanted to give away a few more prizes today before the next episode, I think... I will probably be giving away the final prizes for this year's make along, but I will be again hosting the make nine make along. So make nine 2024 make along next year. So you can also join in next year where you're just going to choose nine projects that you would like to make or work on in the year 2024. And uh, you can make a grid of those nine projects that you would like to make throughout the year and post that on Instagram with the hashtag make nine 2024 now. And um, then as, as you are continuing to work on your projects and make uh, post pictures of the projects, or as you finish any of the projects from your list, you can also include that hashtag. And as I've done in years past and continue to do, I periodically draw prizes throughout the year for those of you that are participating in the make along. So I wanted to give away a few more prizes again today. The last time I recorded an episode, I had offered this prize, but it was not claimed, and so I have redrawn for this prize. I usually go a couple of podcasts out before I redraw for a prize, but it's been three weeks since I recorded last, and I still haven't heard from the person, and I just wanted to give a few more gifts away this time, so um, I just decided to redraw for this one because I've, I've never had anybody get in contact with me after a while. <laughs> Over the years, that's never happened. So if somebody doesn't get in contact with me, usually within the first week of me posting a new episode on YouTube, I have never heard from people after that time frame has passed. So I think I'm kind of safe to <laughs> go ahead and just re-gift this. So here is the first prize. All of these prizes that I'm going to be giving away today, again, were gifted to me by a viewer of this channel named Joy. And so I am now re-gifting them all to those of you who are participating. So this first prize is a beautiful sock set from Charming You Hand Dyed Yarns. It is a DK weight sock set, 85% superwash merino to 15% nylon in the colorway Woodlands. I've also included a little progress keeper charm on here that I put together that has a cute little wooden sweater on it. And then also included with this prize is a needle case that has kind of a travel theme on it. And this is made by a thousand stars. Here is the business card and I'll link to her Etsy shop in the description down below, but it has this beautiful pockets in here to house needles has a little zipper pouch on the one side here and it folds up really nicely and has a magnetic closure on it. So it's a really nice needle pouch. The winner for this prize is Shauna of Shauna Stitches on Instagram. So congratulations to you, Shauna. Please, all of the winners, it's best if you just get in contact with me through direct message on Instagram. Let me know your full name, your first and last name and mailing address, and I'll be able to get these prizes off in the mail to you all as soon as possible. The second prize I have is a skein of yarn from Sweet Tea Yarns who is Molly of Molly Klein Design. And this beautiful skein of yarn is um, also a DK weight. So it's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. And the colorway is called Wishing for Rhinebeck 2021. But very, very pretty colors in there, kind of reminded me of Christmassy colors. And for this prize and the next prize that I'm going to share, I was sent a whole stack of books from Joy. And I thought instead of me choosing a book that 
the winner would like. I thought I would just share, share with you all of the books that she sent to me, and then the winner can choose. And I'll be doing that for several more prizes in the future, so pay attention, I guess, to the books that I'm gonna share. And um, I'll try, I guess I'll probably have to kind of share what books are available as I go along, but I just thought that would be better because I really want to make sure that you guys get a book, that the winners get a book that they'll really enjoy and use. So. I'm gonna show you the books that I have to offer and then the winners can choose which one of these books that you would like to have. Or some of them aren't books, but um, magazines. So I have a few of these Punch, Needle, and Primitive Stitcher magazines. This one is from, it's a fall theme one. Fall 2019 issue. This is the spring 2020 issue. And this is the summer 2019 issue. Do I have any more of those? Yes, I do. Here's one more. This is the, this is a bit thicker it feels like. This is the 2019 Christmas winter issue. Okay, then I have Knit Simple 50 Hats and Caps to Knit. Get Hooked on Tunisian Crochet with, by Cheryl Thies. The New Prayer Shawl Companion by Janet Severi Bristow and Victoria A. Cole Gallo. Prayer Shawl Companion, same authors as the last one. New Pathways for Sock Knitters, book one by Kat Bordy. Not Just Socks for Kids by Sandy Rossner. Knitting Moki Moki or Mochi Mochi, Mochi Mochi, I think, by Anna Hrakovec. Blankets and Throws, Simple Knits by Claire Crompton. Little Knitted Creatures by Amy Gaines. bunch more of the designs. Patton's Next Eight, Next Steps Eight, Fair Isle Knitting. And here's a bunch of the designs there. Carnaby Street by Anne Podles Podlasek. And that's it. <laughs> I thought there was more. Those are all of the um, books that I have to offer. So if you want any more info about those books, I can try to, um, you know, the winners can ask me more, you know, details about those books if you want to see more. And I'll be glad to give you more info or maybe link to, if it's on Amazon, I could link to it so you can kind of look through the books a little bit better. But if the winners could just let me know which of those books, which one of those books you would like, and then I'll include that one of those books along with your yarn prize. So the winner of this yarn and one of those books that I just showed is Debbie at T Hill Cottage. Congratulations to you, Debbie. And the final winner is going to be receiving this skein of yarn, which is by Pichinku. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, it's naturally dyed Peruvian yarn. It was dyed with cochineal and it is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, worsted weight, yeah, 100 grams, and this beautiful deep wine color, which matches my sweater. <laughs> and again, you, the winner of this yarn will also be able to choose one of those books as well. Of course, it's gonna be, if, if 
the two winners happen to choose the same book, it'll be first come first serve, but hopefully you'll not choose the same exact book, but please get in contact with me. The winner, I'm sorry, the winner of this yarn and another one of those books is Stephanie at Texas Peach Knit. So congratulations to you, Stephanie. And again, just let me know. Um, I actually have sent prizes to both Debbie and Stephanie in the past. Um, so I still, I probably still have your addresses, but it would probably be some, most simple if you just get in contact with me. Well, you need to let me know which book you want anyway, but remind me of your address. That will be easiest for me. So congratulations to the winners. I hope that you all enjoy those prizes and continue to join in throughout the rest of the end of the year. It's never too late to join in. And then you can also be planning for the Make 9 2024 Make Along coming up next year. I today am wearing a hand knit sweater. I believe I tried to find it in my, this is my knitting notebook where I keep track of all of my knitting projects. I tried to find my notes on this sweater before I started recording, but I couldn't find it. I think it's called the Ladies Autumn Whirlpool Sweater by Natalie Pellick. If my memory serves me right, that's correct, but I'll definitely link to it in the description box below if you're more interested. I'm pretty sure I made a lot of modifications to this. Maybe I'll also try to link to the episode where I showed this off as a finished object because I know I added the beading to this project and I probably made a lot of modifications. I typically do, um, but I know I also hand dyed this, or yeah, I hand dyed this uh, yarn. So it's made with a uh, fingering weight, 100% non-superwash merino wool, fine merino wool. Okay, on to my finished objects. Like I said, I haven't recorded in three weeks and I haven't recorded an episode in three weeks, so I have several finished objects. I also have several projects that I'm trying to make as Christmas gifts. So I've been really trying to focus on getting some things done for Christmas gifts. So that's reflected in the number of finished objects that I have to share with you all. The first object I wanna share with you is another Muscle Burra hat. I knit this hat for my 11 year old son. He picked out the yarns that he wanted for this project. And out of my stash, he just went through my uh, acrylic stash that I had on hand. He's sensitive to wool, and so he prefers acrylic. So the I have three different colors of yarn in here. The first one is a mystery yarn. I can't even quite remember where I got it from. But anyway, it's just this teal colored yarn. They're all worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarns. The second color that you can see here, oh, I forgot to mention that when I changed colors, I did a type of slip stitch pattern for two rounds. So on this one, I did slip one, knit three, I think. No, slip one, knit two, all the way around for two rounds when I was transitioning to the new color. But when I fold up the brim, it hides that. <laughs> so that's kind of unfortunate, but Maybe he'll wear it long too. You can wear this hat, you know, slouchy or cuffed. I prefer to wear mine cuffed, but you know, maybe my son won't. I forgot to mention that the Muscle Vera pattern is a design by Yuzolda Teague. Anyway, the second color that I transitioned into um, is a Karen Simply Soft Paints color in the, Oce in the Oceana colorway. And then I, I divided the three different colors that he picked out so, so that each of them would be an equal amount. I ended up knitting each section to be about seven and three quarter inches in length. The third color, this bright green, is by Big Twist Value in the Varsity Green colorway. And both of these colors were sent to me by a viewer of this channel named Kim. You can see I also did that transition into the green. So the fun thing about this is that, of course, it's reversible and he can decide which color he wants to have on the outside. So he could also wear it with the bright green color showing. And it's fun, I think it's fun that this fun variegated color is on the brim. So the original pattern for the Muscle Burra hat does not call for you to use worsted weight yarn. It does have a variety of yarn uh, weights that you can use to make this, ranging from fingering to DK weight. But this is, I've made several hats 
I've made several of this pattern using worsted weight hat, <laughs> using worsted weight yarn, and it's worked out for me. I use a six US six four millimeter needles, and I get a gauge of five stitches to one inch, which is the loosest gauge that Isolde Teague provides in her pattern. So this is a gaugeless or a swatchless hat. You just start off the hat and then you can measure your gauge and determine from there how many um, how many stitches you need to increase to in order to get the right size. I have knit the adult medium size, but I knit it to the length of the adult large size because I like to have a lot of extra fabric to cuff up. And that has worked out really well. Um, it fits a normal adult size head. He's 11. He doesn't have a adult size head probably quite yet, but it's not that much different. At 11 years of age, their head is pretty big already. So I just made the adult size and that works well for him. I started this on November 11th and finished it on November 26th. And he really likes it a lot. So I'm so happy I was able to make this for him. And I think it turned out really cute. All right, the next finished object I have to share are my November Knit Picks Felici socks. So throughout this year, I've been working through my stash of Knit Picks Felici yarn, and I've also been knitting through my collection of Crazy Sock Lady sock patterns. And this is my November pair. So I knit the Roots Run Deep sock pattern which was super fun to make. I really enjoyed this pattern a lot. I'm gonna turn it so that you can see the pattern as it runs down the front of the sock. Just has this really fun, not overly complicated, but beautiful design. I just love this center diamond uh, type stitch that runs down the center of the sock. I think it's so beautiful and it works up super well with self-striping because there's no purl stitches in that section, so it doesn't interrupt the pattern when you're change, when the stripes are changing color. Um, if there were, there are some purl stitches along the side panels here. And if I had a color change during one of those rows, then I would just knit all of those stitches so that I wouldn't get any of those little purl blips. I made, um, I did make an adjustment to the cast on number of stitches. I only cast on 60 stitches, um, which is in between the small and medium sizes, just because a 60, stitch sock works best for me and this pattern was easily modified to adjust to that stitch count. So the cuff I knit using Knit Picks Stroll Fingering in Rainstorm Heather and that is a one by one twisted rib which is also a modification from the original pattern. Um, the original pattern has a like a syncopated cuff it's not just a simple one by one or two by two or anything like that. It's syncopated to go along with the patterning, but I just wanted mine to be simple. I had tried doing the patterned cuff and I kept messing it up. So I just decided to do a one by one twisted rib for 20 rounds. And then I switched to the main color, which was Knit Picks Felici in Punch Bug. Both of those sock, both of those yarns are Fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And I use that same Rainstorm Heather for the heels and toes as well. It's a slip stitch heel flap. I used US 1 2 millimeter needles. I added in a slip stitch detail to the ball of my foot, which is what I typically do for my socks to prevent wear and tear on that part of my sock. So I just add in a slip stitch detail very similar to a slip stitch heel flap to prevent um, getting holes in that section of my foot. I started these on November 1st and finished them on November 22nd. And I think that covers it. I think so. I just love these so much. I love the colors in this, in this uh, self-striping yarn. They turned out really cute, I think. And I made several, I have a few, several pairs of finished socks to share with you. So I need to take those off the sock blockers. 
The next pair that I finished is a pair of socks for my husband. And these I knit out of Patton's Croy Socks yarn in the 50s stripes colorway. And then for the heels and the toes, I used some scraps of the same type of yarn, Patton's Croy, but in the Sing in the Blues stripes colorway. I adjusted my stitch count for these since Patton's Croy yarn is a bit thicker than regular sock weight yarn. I cast on 56 stitches and I used a US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. I did two by two ribbing for the entirety of the sock, except on the bottom of the foot, of course, I went into plain stockinette, but all of the top of the sock here is done in two by two ribbing. Slip stitch heel flap again. And I typically use the basic pattern that Kay provides in her patterns from Crazy Sock Lady Designs for all of my socks. So for heels and toes, I typically just refer back to her general instructions. I had to modify them, of course, for these since it was a 56 stitch. I typically do the, you know, medium size in case patterns, but anyway, she does provide 56 stitch count patterns in her socks as well. So anyway, I would refer to that for how to do the heels and toes in my, in my just regular socks. I usually follow her pattern for heels and toes. Um, I think that's it. They're pretty simple to make. Uh, these are the third pair of socks that I have made for my husband. He requested some more, so I'm very, very happy to make him more socks. And I'm going to continue to do that because I have, I've always used Patton's Croy for his socks, which has worked up really, really well for him. And it's just such a hard wearing sock uh, yarn. And I have some more that I can make him some more socks. So I probably will be doing that in the, in the near future. I imagine, I'm gonna try to anyway, make him some more socks. Okay, I need these sock blockers too, because I have two more pairs of socks to share with you all. These are both gift knits. This first pair I have to share with you, I have had done for a very long time, but I haven't been able to share them with you because I am going to be gifting them to my friend Tina and I didn't want to spoil the surprise. She's going to be getting these tomorrow, so I can now record and share with you these beautiful, actually I should have left one of these off so that you can see the pattern that runs down the front better. Um, I just love how these turned out. So this is another pattern by Kay of Crazy Sock Lady Designs, and this is called Whimsical. I'm gonna have to turn way back in my knitting book to find my notes on these socks. So I started these August 23rd, and I finished them September 26th. I again used US 0 two millimeter needles for these, and I made the medium size, which is a 64 stitch count. And the yarn that I used is one that I dyed myself. It's just a one of a kind gray color. Again, a fingering weight yarn, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. And I really love how these turned out as well. They also, if I can recall, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is another twisted uh, ribbing. So one by one twisted ribbing, it looks like. And the beautiful, Tina had mentioned that she really, I had gifted her a pair of cable, cabled socks in a gray color a long time ago, and she said that they were wearing pretty thin, but that they were one of her favorites that I've gifted to her. And so I wanted to make her a new pair of gray cabled socks, and I just love this beautiful cabled pattern that runs down the front of the sock. So the repeat for this one, I believe is 20 rounds. And I did four repeats for the leg. Is that right? No, I only did three repeats for the, the leg. And then, yeah, four repeats for the foot. But that was just so much fun to make. I remember really enjoying this pattern a lot. And I think it's so beautiful. And I'm really excited to give these to Tina. I hope that she will love them. It's kind of hard to share without them on the blocker, but I wanted just to show off that beautiful design that runs down the front. And I also just love the little squiggly lines along the side here as well. I think they're so pretty. 
So I'm really, really excited to get these off to Tina tomorrow. Let's see, is there anything else? I don't have any notes on this project. So I must have followed the pattern exactly. Probably maybe, maybe just adjusting the number of repeats on the leg. I can't quite remember, but anyway, maybe not. Maybe I completely followed the pattern. I don't have, like I said, I don't have any extra notes underneath my project notes about, you know, any modifications that I made. So I must not have made any. <laughs> I think they're so pretty though. I'm so excited to gift those to Tina. And the last pair of socks, well, I do have some socks as works in progress too, but the last pair of finished socks I have to share with you are another gift knit. And these are going to be gifted to my sister-in-law, my husband's sister. I've never knit her socks before, so I'm hoping that she'll like them. I have been making socks for my mother-in-law, um, the last couple of years and she's really enjoyed them. And then my mother-in-law's sister, so my husband's aunt, also said that she would like to have a pair of hand knit socks. And then his sister will also be coming to Christmas. We usually do Christmas together. And so I thought, well, I need to make her a pair too <laughs> since I'm making socks for the other two ladies. Anyway, I had, um, I wanted to make her a neutral pair of socks as well. And cause she usually wears a lot of black and neutral colors and so I didn't want to give her a pair of socks that were too colorful because I thought maybe she wouldn't wear them and so I had this yarn which is Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the Earl Grey Heather colorway and I wanted I didn't want to do just a plain stockinette sock in with this yarn so I actually went on to Ravelry and I searched Knit pick stroll tweed yarn in the projects to see what patterns people have, what sock patterns people have made using this type of yarn. Because since it's tweedy, I didn't know what kind of pattern would really work well with a tweet, this tweedy yarn. And I saw this pattern as one of the projects that someone had knitted. And I remembered that I had been gifted this pattern by Emma Potter of Potter and Bloom long time ago and I'd never gotten around to making it yet, this pattern. And it looked so good on the project page of the person that had knit them. I think it was even in a gray color. So I thought, perfect, that's so, it's just beautiful. It's perfect for Christmas time. And it's a night, I wanted something that wasn't too complicated, um, but wasn't plain stock in it either. And so this was the perfect solution because it's just this fun little pattern up at the top of the sock and then the rest of the sock is plain stock in it. So I love how they turned out. I again knit the 64 stitch count, which is actually the small size. I think there's only two sizes in this pattern, maybe small and large or something like that. I again used US 0 two millimeter needles. Um, the original pattern calls for you to do an eye of partridge heel, but I just replaced that with a slip stitch heel flap because it's more simple for me. And I also feel like it gives a little bit more length. The last time I knit the Eye of Partridge heel, I found that it turned out a little bit sh more shallow or shorter than the slip stitch heel flap. Uh, heel flap. Um, so I just did my plain, the one I'm used to, which is the slip stitch heel flap. The yarn is 65% um, fine superwash merino wool, 25% nylon and 10% Donegal tweed. Um, my sister-in-law, Tammy, has sh a shoe size that's a little bit larger than mine, so I knit this about an inch longer than mine, but they still, these are my normal sock blockers, and it doesn't look like they're too big. I mean, I suppose I could stretch them out a little bit more, but socks are just, you know, they stretch and contract, and I don't know. <laughs> it seems like they fit on these sock blockers just fine as, you know, as they do on my when I make my own pair of socks. But anyway, I hope they will fit her feet and that she will enjoy them. All right, a few other finished objects. Back in August, I had made a couple of these bowl cozies for my family and my mom had mentioned that she would really like to have these for her home as well. So I made a couple more of them for her and my stepdad. So this pattern is called Grandma's Bowl Cozy. It's a free pattern by Haley Geary. 
I didn't tell you what the pattern was for that sock. I'm sorry. <laughs> I spaced that off. I guess I would have been on the bottom of the screen. Evergreen Socks by Madeline Gannon, which you already saw, but I forgot to mention it. So sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> back to the bull cozy. So this is a free pattern by Haley Geary and they work up super, super quickly. I'm, I was able to make each of these in one day. So I made one of these on Saturday and one of these yesterday. So just over this last weekend, I whipped these up really quickly. They are made using worsted weight yarn. So I have this yellow worsted weight yarn that was gifted to me from Kim again. And it is a mystery yarn. It didn't have a label on it, but I can tell it's a worsted weight 100% cotton yarn. I used an G four millimeter hook and I did modify the pattern again as I did the last time I made these bowl cozies. So I just do another increase round to increase to a total of 72 stitches. And I just did that based on the size of my bowl. And I'm pretty sure that my mom's bowls are about the same size as mine. So I hope it will work for her to have this size as well. But the original pattern is a bit smaller and shorter. And I just did another increase round and then knit or crocheted these a little bit taller than what the pattern called for. But I did follow the pattern for the cute little handles on the sides. Oh, I also adjusted the pattern by not joining each round in the round. I crocheted in a spiral. So that's just an easy modification that you can make when you're crocheting a circular thing, but you can kind of see that I just kept going in a spiral instead of joining and then starting a new round. I think that's all for these. They were, you know, really, really simple to work up. So very happy to get these to my mom. Um, I'm going to get those off in the mail soon so that she gets them in time. Actually, her birthday is coming up um, in a week as well. So they'll kind of be maybe a birthday present. I'm going to try to get them off in the mail tomorrow. So, okay. The last finished object that I have to share with you is a really sweet little girl's cardigan. So this I made as a request from Chris's, my husband's grandmother who just turned 94 and she really didn't request it, but she was just talking about one of her great grandchildren she had gotten her a dress for Christmas and she wanted to find a pink cardigan to put over top of it. And she went to the stores in town and could not find a pink cardigan anywhere. And so I just said, well, I could knit her one. And she was like, oh, would you please? That would be great. <laughs> so I did. And I think it turned out super cute. So this little girl is going to be five soon. She's four right now. So um, grandma had said that I should try to do maybe a size five just so it wouldn't be too small. I found a free pattern called Le Flow by Vivre Au Crochet, who is Lucy. And that is the pattern that I made. It was not the simplest pattern to make. I um, started it on November 29th and finished it on December 8th. Um, I used Karen Simply Soft Yarn in Soft Pink, which is another worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn. I, of course, just wanted it to be super simple for them to care for. Let's see, I decided to go up a size. I looked at some of the project pages and noticed that some of the sweaters were fitting when they were on little kids, little girls, they looked a little like they didn't have a ton of ease in them. And so I went up to the 28 size, which I, from my calculations, I think is about a size six. I believe that the original pattern was designed in French and then it was translated to English. And like I said, it just wasn't the easiest pattern to follow. It's definitely not beginner friendly. I used US six, four millimeter needles again and I um, did follow the pattern for, I didn't make any modifications, I don't think, through the yoke, except for the buttonholes. I did place those a little bit more close together than what the pattern called for. I added those in every 10 garter ridges. 
I think the original pattern said to do it every 12 or 14 or something like that, but I did them a little bit closer than what was recommended. I think I knit the body a little bit shorter than what was recommended and started the, this is called an Italian pattern, which was super easy and fun and beautiful, I think, to make. Um, I started that a little sooner than what the pattern called for. And I added one more repeat of that Italian pattern as well. I believe there's only supposed to be two and I added a third one. And then, yeah, I just made, let's see. Yeah, I didn't write how long I, I did it, but I just kind of went by eye. I didn't want it to be too long. The original pattern has it more of a longer cardigan, but I since it's gonna be worn over a dress, I thought it'd be nice to have it not be too long. The sleeves I modified quite a bit. I started off with the regular cast on number, but I did not do decreases as soon as the pattern recommended. And I didn't do as many decreases either. So I knit the sleeves straight for 31 rounds. And then I did some decreases every six rounds. And then I again added the three ridges of the Italian pattern and decreased to the cuff, but I ended up not decreasing as much as the original pattern. I only decreased to 36 stitches total. And then it has an I-cord bind off on all of the edging here. And I had these buttons in my stash, which I thought were cute and worked well. So I'm really excited about this one. I'm glad I was able to get it done pretty quickly for her. And hopefully it will work well. I hope it fits. You know, it's just kind of a gamble for the, for everything. I just hope it fits. <laughs> I don't, I have no idea. Um, I have met this little girl, but it's been a while since I've even seen her. So um, I hope it fits her. I did the best I could. <laughs> hopefully it'll work out well. It's a, uh, yeah, it worked. I mean, it was an easy, quick pattern to make. I just hope it works out. <laughs> okay, those are all of my finished objects. I wanted to give an update on my um, Hereth shawl that I showed off on my last episode as a finished object. So my friend Tina, um, right after I posted my video and she saw my shawl, she said that she just loved it so much. And I had thought of Tina when I knew it wasn't gonna work for me because it was too big for me because I know Tina loves extra big shawls. But I didn't think that she would like it because it's made out of 100% Peruvian Highland wool and Tina is more sensitive to wool than I am and so I just really didn't think that she would be able to handle the wool that it was made out of. But she loved it so much and she said, can I just try it please? So I, uh, I gave it to her and she tried it and she wasn't bothered by the wool thankfully and she loves it, so I gifted that to Tina. So I won't be making a second half. I won't be turning that shawl into a blanket as I had mentioned in my last episode, but I may end up making another shawl in with scraps, like making another triangle shawl with my Knit Picks palette and kind of like I had mentioned I was going to do for the second half, making it into a blanket <laughs> um, because I just really, and there were a few mornings when I wrapped up in that shawl, even though it's way too big for me, I still liked the weight of it. And it was nice to just have as something to throw on, but I would make it a little bit smaller for myself and just have it be like a, a wrap that I can have to throw on on mornings when I'm a little chilly. So a little update on that project. <laughs> okay, on to my works in progress. My first one is being held in this cute Christmassy bag that I made myself. And these are my December Knit Picks Felici socks. Ooh, I'm getting a big blob of yarn coming out here. This yarn was gifted to me by a viewer of this channel named Nicole. So this yarn is called Yipes Stripes. And it is, again, 75% superwash reno, 25% nylon yarn. 
And the pattern that I am making is the newest pattern released by Kate Litton of Crazy Sock Lady Designs called Find the Joy Socks. I'm trying something new with these. Um, like I mentioned, uh, 60 stitch count socks work best for me. Kay's patterns come in three sizes, 56 stitches, 64 stitches, and 72 stitches. And I like to adjust them if I can to the 60 stitch like I did on my November socks. But with this pattern, that wasn't possible. And so I have decided to try the 56 stitch count for these, but I'm a little bit leery whether they're gonna work out or not. I keep trying them on and they're going on okay. Obviously they're snug. I'm just not sure if it's gonna work out or not, <laughs> but I'm trying it. Anyway, it, it starts off, so I'm making the small size, 56 stitches. Starts off with two by two ribbing for 20 rounds. And then it goes into this really nice and simple but fun texture for the sock. They look so tiny to me. It's crazy how little they look to me. I don't know, maybe they're not that little, but here's my November socks compared to these. Maybe it's not too much of a difference. I don't know, when I'm making them, I keep I keep trying them on because I'm like, these aren't gonna work. These are way too little. So I try them on, I'm like, well, no, it does go on. I think it's okay. <laughs> I'm just not sure. I'm again using US Zero two millimeter needles. And yeah, I really love the pattern. It's so much fun to make. I have a progress keeper on here that my cousin Allie made for me, which is so sweet. It's a little cute glittery donut. It's so adorable. And yeah, they're working out really well, I think, but I will keep you all posted on how, I don't know, I keep thinking that maybe I'm gonna have to start them over with the 64 stitch count, but for now it's working and I don't know. I think once I get past, obviously once I get past the heel, that will be the true test, but I like my legs to be quite long, so I'm gonna do several more uh, stripes before I go into the heel. So we'll see how they work out, I'm not sure. Oh, this one, I had this last month too, but this yarn, again, one skein was wound one way and one skein was wound in the opposite direction as far as the color stripes go. So I had to rewind another one of these skeins, which is so silly, I think. I don't know why their skeins wouldn't go in the same order of the stripes. I think that's so funny. Okay, um, I think that's all for those for now. To be, to be determined whether it's gonna work out with the 56 stitch count. Okay, the next socks I'm working on, and these are the ones that I am really focused on right now. I've kind of put those December socks, those uh, Find the Joy socks on hold, because I wanna finish up some more Christmas gifts, and those socks are for me, so they can wait <laughs> until after Christmas. You know, I'll have that extra week to finish those up if I am running behind. These are a pair of socks I'm not really sure who I'm gonna be gifting them to. I have two more people that I really wanna make socks for for Christmas gifts. And I was gonna be gifting these to my husband's aunt, but they're turning out so mismatched that I don't think that she would like them as well. So I might be gifting them to a friend that would probably be okay with mismatched socks a bit more. Look how different they are. It's driving me crazy. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hoping that the person that I do gift them to won't mind it. This is again uh, Patton's Croy Socks yarn and the colorway is called Cameo Colors. Yes. So again, this is 75% washable wool, 25% nylon. I'm again using the US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. And for these, I cast on 52 stitches, which actually is fitting my foot really, really well. Since again, this yarn, this Patton's Croy is thicker than typical fingering weight yarn. So I just did one by one ribbing for 16 rounds and then just plain stockinette. Slip stitch, heel flap, and then I'm just working through the foot. I tried to start off with them matching. I thought I was. It's kind of hard to tell with this type of yarn, but as you can see, the top of these kind of look like they're matching, don't they? But then the colors just are doing their own thing. I'm wondering how much yarn, I don't think I'll have enough. I was thinking maybe I'll have enough to make, I might have enough to make one more sock. 
so that I could have a pair that's, you know, maybe if I make one more sock, that sock will match one of these two better than they're matching each other. But then I'll have this one random sock. That's going to be dumb. <laughs> so I don't know. I think that my friend Michelle uh, won't mind the mismatched. I asked my kids about it and they're like, oh no, mom, they're fine. But I don't know. I don't think they look like a very good pair. <laughs> Especially this one, how pink it is. And then it has this huge transition after the heel flap into this dark stripe. I don't know. This one's more cohesive with the marled colors. I don't know. I'm a little disappointed with those so far, but anyway, they're coming along. <laughs> they should be done pretty soon. And then, um, I'm not sure what I'll do for the other, for the socks for my husband's aunt. I do have some more Patton's Croix, so I may make her another pair of Patton's Croix. I have some self-striping Patton's Croix, so I wouldn't have to worry about them being so hard to match as with this yarn that's more marled and hard to find the pattern repeat. My last work in progress that I have to share with you is in another bag that I made myself. I had to piece this back part together because I didn't have enough of this fabric left. I had made some of these bags and sold them a few years ago. Anyway, I am making myself a Saturday shrug, which is a free design by Jackie Rose. And I am excited about it. I am making this using some yarn that my friend Tina gifted to me. It is Sky Tweed by Classic Elite Yarns. It's 100% lamb's wool. And I have three of these balls, which are 50 grams each. They're worsted weight. And I am holding it together with some bare silk mohair, lace weight silk mohair. So this is just a really simple cowl pattern that is made using one by one ribbing. And it's a cowl that can kind of slip over your shoulders and be worn over the shoulders as well. And I knit up one of those little 50 gram balls and it only gave me a length of five inches. And the pattern calls for the total length to be 20 inches. So since I only have three of those balls, I would have only gotten about 15 inches of length. And I wanted to have at least 20 inches, if not more, since I'm tall. So I am right now subbing in some yarn that is very similar, but not exactly a match. So here's the this um, sky tweed that I have three balls of, and here's the substitute that I'm adding in. So you can see it's it's got the same black base, it's got the same flecks of color, but they're just different flecks. These are thicker, and these are thinner flex, I guess, but they're really, really similar. This one is a super old yarn that I probably thrifted, but I can't quite remember. It's Coates and Clark's, so it's like an old Red Heart yarn, but here's the label. It's just ancient looking. <laughs> and let's see, this is, and I don't think, I don't think Red Heart even makes 100% wool yarn anymore, which why don't they? They should, but they don't. Anyway, this is 100% virgin wool moth proof yarn. Again, it's worsted weight. And it's in the color 112. So anyway, I'm just adding that color in to give myself a little bit more length so that hopefully I'll get to more of a 20 inch. And you can't really tell, I don't think. Maybe you can kind of tell, I switched right there. There's a bit of a line, but it's not super noticeable, I don't think especially because the camera can pick it up more than you can in real life. So I'm just going, so I've knit through one ball of the Sky Tweed. I'm going to use that Red Heart yarn, and then I'm going to go into my last two balls of the Sky Tweed, and hopefully it'll be long enough. I'm using the recommended needles, I think. 
Um, I think so. It had a tubular cast on, which went well. Uh, the, Jackie Rose has links to tutorials for how to do the cast on, and it's pretty easy, really. And so I used a US 8 5 millimeter for the cast on and then switched to the US 9 5.5 millimeter for the rest of the shrug. I believe that is the um, called for needles. I do have one more skein that I could add in if I want some more length. This is also a worsted weight, but it's a lot different than the other yarns. This I know I thrifted. It has a $1 tag on there. I know that's from a thrift store in town. So this is called Neveda, Neveda Celesta, and it's 50% kid mohair, 50% virgin wool. Um, so it's a lot different than the other worsted weights I'm using, but I thought it might work if I just wanted to add some more length. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Well, it'll just, I'll, I'll be able to tell once I get done with that Red Heart scrap of yarn how much length that gave me. That'll give me a better idea of how long it will be. And then I'll decide. So those are all of my projects that I have to share with you all. I hope that you enjoyed seeing what I've been working on lately. And I hope you all are doing really well. Uh, I usually have my bedroom decorated for Christmas pretty festively. I usually have a Christmas village set up on my dresser here, but we've rearranged our house. Oh, you can kind of see our Christmas tree is right there. You can kind of see the lights peeking through my door. Um, and then we've kind of just done some rearranging in our house and we moved a, a dresser that's similar in size to this one into our dining room. And so I've been able to set up our Christmas village out there where everybody can enjoy it. So that's been nice to have that out in, a li in our living space rather than here in our bedroom. But our bedroom isn't quite as festive as it is, has been in years past. But anyway, I hope you all are enjoying the Advent season as we're approaching Christmas. And I hope you all are doing really well. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.